Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers. This one is part 30 and it's all about making condenser oil traps for model steam engines. A simple condenser oil trap is very easy to make. Here's a clip showing the components, a piece of copper tubing and a special base and top. I used to have these made by a local engraver but in the end I stopped using them and just made them from normal pieces of brass. I used the engraved parts because I thought they would be stronger. But as this is not a pressure vessel, I soon realised that a normal solder joint would be OK. The other parts comprise of an inlet and outlet fitting, a steam tap and a piece of copper pipe that is soldered into the bottom of the steam tap that goes almost to the bottom of the tank. At one time I used to make a lot of these and sell them commercially, but it never was much of a profit making exercise so I stopped selling them commercially. The first part of the job needs a deburring tool. The deburring tool removes the inner rough edge to allow the insertion of the supporting mandrel. Clamping a piece of copper tube like this in a small three jaw chuck is asking for trouble. As I made a few of these, I turned up a piece of steel as a mandrel, which allowed me to clamp the copper tubing in the chuck, and with the life centre in the end of the mandrel, everything was held securely. In this clip, as you can hear, I'm running the lathe in back gear and I'm doing this to slow it down because it's not a good idea to take really fast cuts when turning copper tubing because the metal's far too soft. After facing the end of the piece of tube at one end I use the deburring tool to clean up the inside edge and a file to clean up the outside edge. A quick health and safety warning when filing in the lathe make sure that the file has a substantial handle. Never use a file in its raw state. Normally files have sharp pointy ends, which are fine when they're inside handles, they're not too good when they're stuck in your hand. In this clip I'm doing a loose assembly and as you can see the copper tubing fits into a milled recess in the polished brass base and cap. Everything fits ok so it's on to the next part of the job, drill a hole in the side of the copper tube. This hole that I'm drilling is tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. After which I carefully thread the hole using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap. And once that's been done, I screw in very tightly a union like this. This brass union is also soft soldered to the copper barrel later on. And because it's threaded as well as soldered, it's a very strong watertight joint. When I had these parts engraved, the engraver used to put three spots on the inside. These act as a guide for the drill bit, which is also tapping size for 5 16 by 32. My reason for revisiting making condensers is all down to this small drawing that was sent to me by a viewer in New Zealand. The viewer explained that he'd made the condenser like this, but when he opened the drain tap, nothing came out of the pipe and to me it's fairly obvious why that is, it may be less obvious to other viewers. If you look carefully at the diagram you will see that the exhaust outlet and exhaust inlet use quarter inch pipe, whereas the main outlet to drain the condensate uses 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe, this is no good. Whichever diameter inlet pipe or outlet pipe you use, the drain pipe has to be the same diameter because otherwise you cannot use back pressure to pump the water out. Another minor problem, if the drain pipe is too close to the bottom, which is not on this drawing, but if the pipe was too close to the bottom of the tank, you may get a blockage problem with the steam oil. I've had this in the past. I would leave about 3 sixteenths of an inch between the bottom of the drain pipe and the base of the tank. But the main problem is the pipe diameters, they all need to be the same. Once I had a complete kit of parts, all I needed to do was soft solder them together. This is a finished main steam exhaust condenser oil trap all ready for the wood cladding. Now to take it a step further. In the workshop, making a condenser oil trap with a boiler feed water preheater coil, part 1. This is also known as an economizer, and the principle is, the heat from the exhaust steam that passes through the condenser is used to heat the boiler feed water on its way to the boiler. This is done by using a simple heat exchanger. Quite a few viewers have been asking me, how does this work? And the simplest way to show this is for me to make a condenser 
with a heat exchanger coil inside it. And here's the coil. So the components are a piece of copper tubing, two end caps, and a coil of copper pipe. And the first job is to square off the ends of the copper pipe. I could do this in the lathe, but it's quicker, and there's less chance of a disaster doing it on the belt sander. If I put this part in the chuck, it will overhang considerably, and it may foul up when I start cutting it. I suppose I could make a wooden plug for the end, centre drill this and use a live centre, but all this is going to take a long time. Squaring off the end of the copper tube this way takes far less time. To make sure that the ends of the copper tube are square to the barrel, I just use a set square. It couldn't be simpler. Once a piece of copper tube is perfectly square at both ends, it's time now to bend the coil. And for this job, I'm using a piece of steel bar that I found in my box of steel bar bits. You could use a piece of tube, but whichever method you use, the piece that you're winding around needs to be 3 8 of an inch less than the piece of copper tube you're using for the barrel. The copper pipe is 3 16 of an inch in diameter. In imperial measurement, 3 16 is half of 3 8 this coil of copper tubing fits inside the condenser barrel, and I want the finished coil to be approximately the diameter of the inside of the barrel itself. I'm making this condenser oil trap economizer because quite a lot of viewers were asking me about it as I mentioned earlier on in the video. I must say at this stage though, this principle doesn't work if it's a very small condenser oil trap. You need a good surface area for the steam to heat the tubing, which in turn will heat the water. So as far as model condenser oil traps go, this is quite a big one. In this clip you can see me making small adjustments to the coil as I fit it inside the barrel of the condenser. It's quite a tight fit, and I want it to be, I don't want it rattling about in there. I also need to space the coils so they're not touching each other once they're in place inside the tube. And in this clip I'm persuading the coil to go into the tube using a scrap piece of mahogany. I bought these two castings from Blackgate's Engineering. I used some like this a while back when I made a condenser oil trap for my Stuart Victoria steam plant. And these are actually castings for the water preheater of a model Clayton steam wagon. I just need to modify them slightly for my application. I don't want the part of the casting that sticks out of the side, and rather than machine them off, I'm cutting them off on the bandsaw. And after removing these parts on the bandsaw, it's over to the lathe for a bit of machining. I try and do the majority of my work these days in the small Boxford lathe, and here I'm fitting the casting into the chuck. And as you've just seen, I always give it a bit of a tap with my very soft nylon faced hammer, just to make sure that the casting is seated properly in the chuck. Wherever possible when making these videos, I will use the Boxford lathe for the machining operations, because it's more like the size of lathe that most viewers may have in their home workshops. I must admit though, sometimes it is easier to use a smart and brown lathe, which is a good bit bigger than this one, for machining castings like this. But provided the casting will physically fit in the lathe and you can get the tool into the right position, there's nothing wrong with using a small lathe for manufacturing model steam engine parts. So here you see a kit of parts for a model condenser oil trap that is also going to double up as a boiler water feed preheater, also known as an economizer. And now it's time to put it all together, and I'm using some Friar Lux solder paint. This is really good stuff, a little bit expensive, but incredibly useful. This is proper solder and flux in one mixture, and I put plenty of it on, and you notice that I put it about a quarter of an inch up the tube, because once I position the tube vertically like this, when the correct temperature is reached, the solder will melt and run down towards the end plate, and this will give a really good joint. So that's one end done, now for the other end. You will notice the use of a paintbrush. I dip this in some water and wipe round the end with it, and what this does is just cleans up the end and evens out the solder. I will be making a mountain for this condenser if I put it into a steam plant, but for the moment it doesn't have a function other than to sit on my bench and look very pretty. I just wish I had a girlfriend like that. And on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.